All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that trailer. Uh, that is Dune being released December 18th of this year, uh, directed by Dennis Villanueva and also written by him, John Spates and Eli Roth. Uh, we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, what you saw and um, the cast, as you saw from the trailer, is completely loaded. Um, it's a veritable who's who of, uh, I guess, the hunky guys of Hollywood right now. Yes. <laughs> you had Josh Brolin in there, Jason Momoa, um, Timothy Shemet, he's up and coming. Um, it, and the wrestler guy. What's yeah, yeah, he's in there also. Um, yeah. This is a, uh, a, a star-studded yes. cast, and um, I, I like all of uh, Dennis Villanueva's work, especially on the, um, I, I want to call it the um, the heralded Dune 2049. Uh, it, it had some mixed reviews, but the the way it was presented was, uh, it was simply amazing, um, the photography behind it. Um, the way the scenes were put together, um, basically anything that he, it, I put him up there with uh, Christopher Nolan as far as movies that if he is directing, um, it's definitely worth the watch. Y even if you're not familiar with the uh, the story, if you know the guy who's helming the movie, and um, it, this is one of the movies I yeah yeah let, let's go see this. Uh, opening night on IMAX, but I'm kind of um, concerned. December uh, 2020, everybody's pushing the big tentpole movies back in 2021, you know, just to be safe. Um, I think, you know, tw uh, December, I think it's still a little bit of a risk. What do you guys think? I believe that, uh, that I, from what I've heard, that it has been pushed back. But, you know, definitely, you know, keep looking at, you know, the release dates because I believe that it has, as I said, been pushed back until, Dece you know, not December 2021, but it's been pushed back to 2021 to give it more little airtime mm -hmm. for people to say, okay, maybe COVID's kind of dying down. Maybe it's going to probably most likely be push back to 2021 so keep an eye out for a date that's all i'm going to say on the release date well i hope it comes out um this year because um based on what i saw in the trailer i mean this is a this is a blockbuster movie um yes. this is definitely one of those summer tentpole movies that um uh i'm not even looking at the uh the release dates but it, it's obviously they want the biggest crowd possible um and i'm i'm kind of surprised that they're going for december everybody else is saying you know 2020 is a wash and um it pretty much is it, it, it's a wash <laughs> as far as big productions um we're, we're seeing movies come out that have you know the smaller budgets uh they're being released uh you know vod streaming um i know new mutants came out in theaters um that kind of felt like a mistake right now because you're talking about they released the movie to very limited theaters, although it is playing very well internationally. Same thing with Christopher Nolan's Tenet. Um, you know, it's barely touching the surface out here, um, but of course it's doing very well internationally. And I think they're saying, you know what, we'll just, you know, we'll take that international money, whatever we get from the United States. And uh, when things reopen, maybe they're gonna re-release it, who knows, um, but, uh, this is one movie I'd definitely like to see in the summer or kind of like in the, the Oscar season, you know, in November. Um, it just doesn't feel right at the moment to release a movie this big in, in December, even though we're, we're in it September, right? Um, thinking in December, it's like not, it's not right. It's, that's an odd feeling to have. <laughs> well, you know, you, you, you've got a, a movie here. Big, big money movie. Huge money movie. George Lucas wants to work with this much money again. And uh, the money's already been spent. I mean, you know, the people have been paid, the act has been shot, there might be a little editing done, but everything's been spent. So right now, uh, they have to put the money back in the wallet. And yeah, they may be happy to settle for any little bit of amount of money possible because even in 2021, you know, January, they're not going to say, okay, COVID's gone, everyone back to the theaters. It's not going to happen that way. It's going to be months 
even if they say at, at January 1st, COVID is over, it'll be months before the theaters get back to the work that they were doing, the, the level of, of, of visitation. Right. And so, yeah, these I guys agree. are going to lose money big time. I mean, I'm eager to see Stellan Skarsgård on the, the big screen with Dave Bautista, was the, uh, Dave the wrestler. Dave Bautista, yes. yes. of Guardians of the Galaxy fame. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. I want to see all these actors right? again. Yeah, I just want to, I want to go back into a theater and just watch a movie. <laughs> all right. No, and this is <laughs> I think thing. we're at that point. This is the thing. Uh, their characters, you know, are definitely going to be involved with one another because uh, one's playing the Baron Harkonnen, which will be a different look compared to the 1984 film. And then Dave Bautista is playing the Beast Raban, even though there has been no word on yet who's going to be playing uh, Fade, the nephew of the Baron. So it may oh, yes. end up being Dave Batista playing the Beast as the only bad, really bad guy besides the Baron in the first two films. You know, so it'll be interesting to see who they might cast as Fade if they do. Justin Bieber. There you go. Yes. That'd be a nightmare. Justin Bieber. I think that would be perfect. He'd be perfect to get killed by Paul Atreides. Yes. I, I, I'm like, I'm so invested in that now. Justin Bieber. <laughs> I can see his agent now. <laughs> Sting did it. It worked true for Sting. It'll, it can't hurt your, your thing or your, your show at this point. But yeah. True. Justin Bieber. I agree. Um, you, know. you get to look, wear the old black suit, look awesome. Knife. Yes. You can cut a bitch. <laughs> You know, and that's the whole thing, too. This, as Anthony was saying, this cast is stacked up, as I oh, was yeah. saying. You know, you have Josh Brolin, you have Jason Moana, you have Zendaya, you have Dave Bautista. Jason Moana is in this? Yeah, Moana. Moana, Moana as I call it. him. Yeah. He, you know, he's Jason that, Moana. you know, huckable, you know, animated hero. Uh, yeah. Never mind. Um, but yeah, this cast is outstanding and, you know, just similar to, you know, like the original Dune where Kyle McLaughlin was kind of like mostly an unknown actor who ended up playing the role of Paul, you know, it's sort of like, hey, this is like another stepping stone for the, now the young man playing him in this version you know, to get more, even though he's popular, it'll just be, you know, another step of people going like, hey, you're the cool guy in Dune, you know? That was a fantastic job. But that's the thing. Uh, it's also going to be a two-part film, so I don't know where they're going to end this, you know, version of Dune. Well, and they said then, roughly um, the first half, so this is going to yeah. be... Um, I was thinking this was a reboot from the 1984 movie, um, it's which was good. Which it was memorable. Um, they're going back to the source material, and yes. um, they're going to be covering. Um, th this is also, I should point out, an international effort. Uh, it's good to see multiple countries coming together to put together a classic. Um, they are covering roughly the first half of the uh, the book uh, by Frank Herbert. Um, so I have some reading to do. And I thought maybe I can just rewatch 1984. I'm like, I'm right back there. Uh, well, you know, time, but, to, yeah, time to read the book. The thing. That's well, the that's... thing. That is the thing. It's sort of like, as I was mentioning before we even started, about how David Lynch version, he didn't have any say in the final cut of the movie Dune from 1984. And he was really heartbroken about this because... As some people will tell you, they tried to cram the whole book into one film. Blink of your life. Uh, no. But that's the thing. With this version, as I'm saying, yeah, it's going to be two parts. Uh, they're going to, you know, be two parts, do the yes. whole thing. Right. And, you know, 
and I'm so happy because as I was telling everyone too before we start the show, if Frank Herbert hadn't done the book, we would not have gotten George Lucas to do Star Wars or right. Games of Thrones and that stuff like Jawa that. Are so, straight from the book. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that apparently uh, George Herbert uh, Mr. Herbert, I should say, uh, took a lot of different languages from diff uh, the language and words he used. So in the book, he talks about a jihad. And in this movie, they will not be calling it a jihad. Uh, but they will call it a holy war. Because so, yeah. they're a little bit you know, testy these days about that sort of thing over there. So, but I, I, I love it when a movie brings out some language from another culture. Gives us new stuff. I mean, I'm really think I'm I'm blanking on specifics other than like Stargate, but I don't think yeah uh, Stargate was a good one yeah yeah but Jaffa's are, are their language is not quite fair to you so I'm pretty sure it's all fake but is it am I, am I wrong Well, uh, who knows maybe they yeah. came up with the language it's sort of like uh, I know for a fact they um part uh -huh. of the Dune out in Egypt somewhere yes in the desert where it's like definitely over a hundred and some odd degrees and you're out there and like, hey, can someone give me a, like a nice suit <laughs> so I can drink some water, the water of life? Uh, yeah, you know, it can get to be 160 degrees out there in the shade. And so I can see yeah. someone coming up. Yes, we've made these dark, these dark black suits for the stars actually have air conditioning built into them. Yeah. yeah. All those little pockets of water, they're holding ice. And blue ice for them. Right. That comes back to the time they, in Star Wars, you know, they have the cantina and they've got the one guy that's got the big nose and they've got a, a hair dryer up his nose to give him some air in his suit <laughs> in between breaks. I think the same thing is going to happen to these poor bastards. Which that's people run over with umbrellas and, and, and fans for them constantly. Well, I'm just excited that uh, Dennis Villanueva is doing it. Um, ever since I saw his work on Prisoners with Hugh Jackman, um, yeah, you know, there's only a few um directors that I would just pay ticket price to see whatever they are doing up next without going on Rotten Tomatoes, right? Or reading the San Francisco Chronicle to read about the movie and um, yeah, <laughs> read about the movie and see if it's worth the price. Um, just a handful of guys that um, when they they earn your respect and you say, yeah, this guy is is a um, one of the top filmmakers, you know. Uh, working today, then when they come out with something new, you, you go watch it. Um, and uh, I know, you know, late 2049, it was good. Um, it, it didn't quite hold up, but um, right before that, he did Arrival, which right. is amazing, right? Um, right? So he's done, before that, it was Sicario. It's funny that he said that he wasn't ready to do a, a new movie. Run. Yeah. It's funny that he mentioned in, uh, he wasn't ready to do a Dune movie until he did Arrival and um, uh, Blade Runner. I'm like, you've already done these massive, you know, production. It just shows the the respect he had for the the source material. You know, sort of like um, Peter Jackson saying, you know, I had to, I had to work to get there. I'm humble that you you know you, you want me to uh, tackle this project. So when you can go on a project and you respect material to that level, I think it's just really going to show in the end. Well, you know, the, 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 the Dune movie we're chatting about here, uh, the first one, really, really did poorly at the box office. Yeah, I did. And so I'm, you know, making a multi-part movie didn't happen very much. And then, of course, Lord of the Rings came out. And it made, you know, huge amounts of money, just hemorrhaged money everywhere. Everyone loved it. So here he is, someone, producer, going to a bank and saying, okay, I'm going to make a multi-part movie. It's going to be June. Uh, but this time, we've got a plan, and we're really going to do it right. And it's one of those things that's kind of terrifying. I mean, you want to do it right, because otherwise it'll get bombed again. On the other hand, people are coming in so jaded by the last movie. It's going to be hard to make that actually happen, and you want it to happen. Right. So. And this is the thing, too. Uh, you know, I know the, the director... I know the director, Dennis, 
is a big fan of the book. And he, he read it multiple times when he was younger and going like, that's why he wants to make the best movie version that he can. And, you know, and just like what Al was saying, it's, you know, people go and they look at the 1984 film, you know, hey, they tried to cram so much into one movie. Mm-hmm. And if, let's say, they would have had the chance to say, oh, hey, we'll do a second part, you know, we'll end and we'll have like, hey, to be continue, you know, unlike like the horror sequels, which we got multiple movies of during that time frame in the 80s. It's sort of like, hey, yo, Halloween you know, but, right. It's sort of like, hey, you know, but that's the thing with Dune, you know, hopefully it won't, you know, as some people are hoping, hey, this is going to be a fantastic movie, a movie that we're all hoping for, and it'll make its money, you know, and so everyone can be happy. The fans will be happy with the movie, but that's all I'm saying is that, yeah, I'm hoping for the best for this film because it looks really good. It's got a stellar cast. It does look good. And Hans Zimmer is doing the music for all you fans of Hans Zimmer, you know, yeah, I'm sorry, you know, but that's the thing. It's sort of like the music from the original movie was done by Toto and someone else, but uh, hey, you know. So you're saying they were serious this time. Yes, and originally, and Hans also, by the way, uh, if you heard the Pink Floyd song Eclipse, yes, that is a throwback to uh, the Jabberwocker uh, film that uh, someone else wanted to do on Dune, and it was all originally Pink Floyd was going to do the music score for Dune in 1984, but because of the delays, they couldn't do it. So they ended up with Toto. Toto. <laughs> it friends Toto. Yeah, you know, one thing I have to say that I liked about the original movie. Now I, I'll say one thing as well. Uh, I never got into the books. I tried uh, my my minion that helped me on my show. Big fan. Uh, he loves the books. He keeps trying to explain stuff to me. Like, no, I don't want to know. But what I really liked out of the first movie is uh, they would have a little bit of narration and they would show up an, an, a painted image of, you know, the, uh, the the star pilots and their huge misshapen heads floating in their tanks. Uh, I really liked that art style they used. It really felt like uh, Twilight, not Twilight, but the Night Gallery looking stuff. Right. And as a more sophisticated moviegoer now, I realize whenever you do that, you're doing it to save money because you don't have time and the money to make the set and and have some actors come out and actually act the information to the audience. You have to narrate it in. And I'm going to say, I'm going to bet this new movie doesn't do anything like that. I I think there's going to be a lot less narration in the new movie. Uh, but I, like I said, I really did like that art style. But, you know, again, I, I keep wondering about the poor banks. They're like, okay, yeah, Lord of the Rings did this. It'll be great. COVID-19 comes out and, okay, you're not making any money now. <laughs> oh, Good somebody luck. who somebody who rubber stamped that, uh, the go-ahead on that at the bank is getting beaten up right now. So it's a real shame. I, I wanted to mention that. 1984 Dune, yeah, it, it performed poorly at box, off, uh, box office. But like all other movies, I mean, The Thing, it's like I'm getting paid by John Carpenter to mention The Thing every time we do a show. Oh, cool. <laughs> How do I get that? <laughs> but The Thing also bombed, and yeah. it had a massive cult following. So I think yes. that um, there's less of a chance to say, you know, Dune failed. I think it's more of it failed in the box office, but enough people enjoyed it growing up that we have enough, you know, um, people looking for a a remake, you know, that um, we can put it out there and feel pretty comfortable that our return on investment is going to be high. Um, Well, it does look like they spent the money this time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just dripping production value. um, Oh, yeah. 
George they have some, wants in on this one, like I said. They they have massive heavy hitters on this. If you look at the uh, the production part on, on the wiki, you just look at the cast. Um, you, you can almost say they spared no expense on this movie. Yeah, um, think about that. Who, who would they brought in? What other big name would they have brought in for a part other than who they did? Uh, think about that for a few months. The casting is actually really good. Dave Batista is, is perfect for that for his role. Um, Momoa is good for it. Maybe not the best, but he's still very good. He's sort of a very popular actor right now. Uh, I don't know the actor that's playing the father in this. And that's Oscar, Oscar Oscar Isaac, who is in the last couple of Star Wars. Yeah, movies. Oscar Isaac. Yeah, well, he looks very good for the part in this. Stellan Skarsgård is in this. Uh, I didn't realize. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I don't know. Party's playing in it, but he's he's in there somewhere. And Charlotte Rampling. Zendaya is in it. She was in uh, Spider Man Homecoming. Yeah, or was so, that the second Spider Man? Yeah. Uh, she was in, in, in both. Yeah. Yes. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. She's a little, in my opinion, a little less tested as an actress. I've liked her work so far. And this, I think, will play into the character she has played in the past. But I still want to see, I want to reserve judgment on her acting on this until I actually see it. But everyone they've got in this is, is pretty, pretty much top shelf of what you could add. There is very little argument about who you could They put in Rebecca movie. Ferguson from Mission Impossible movies. You could say yeah. I wanted this person rather than that person. But they're both still pretty good actors, pretty heavy heater, hitters. Uh, in the the field, so it, it's really hard to say that they they didn't bring in some shell for the for a, a large role for, on any of this. No, no. So it, that's really nice to see. I do want to see how some of these characters are going to handle. It. I still like the idea of Justin Bieber in it. Damn it! <laughs> there you go. I'm Part gonna be two. I'm gonna be complaining about that for a long time now. Part two. Either yeah. that or Eminem. Yeah, if this go. movie isn't yeah. three hours long, then they cut some stuff, right? Yeah. All right. If you're already planning for a full adaptation, um, you got to go all the way. Um, yeah. Do it the way of the Lord of the Rings. You say, you know what? This is there's a massive amount of material in this. Um, we want to stay. If you want to stay true to the source material, then you go all the way. And um, fans will sit through a three-hour movie if it's good. If it's you good, you got to sit through it, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. If it's Although good, I will say you'll be good. It doesn't say anywhere how long the movie is. No, they haven't released the runtime yet. So. Here's a, th a thought. Are they putting it out uh, knowing that you know, the COVID and so forth is, is out right now? Are they going to release the theaters as a soft opening to see how it gets accepted so they can fiddle with the editing a little bit before they really bring oh. it Oh, well, that's why you have test audiences. I hope they don't do that. If I'm well, paying yeah, but how many test audiences did they have? Because of COVID. That's true. That's true, but you don't use, I, you know, I, I understand that It'll part. You just don't use real audience as the test audience. I think they did that. What was that movie, Cats? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it bombed so bad that they went and redid it. I'm oh, like, oh yes, on. and gave no, them no, buttholes. No, 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 no. It, I, if I'm paying eighteen fifty plus an $8 popcorn and $7 soda, yeah. and I reserve my, had to reserve my ticket a month in advance, and you can't I better not be no a guinea pig. That too, so the theater is losing money, right? Right off the bat, can't with anyone they can't, the slow they, scenes. <laughs> they can't sell out the theater. I guess if sellout is fifty percent capacity, right? Tops, yeah. So that just means everything else is going to go up, right? It might be a ten dollar popcorn now, right? Nine dollar right. soda, right? Hello. So this movie, I don't know how they're going to do water? audiences. You'd be better <laughs> off going to the drive-in. Yeah, Double it's not the same. Because yeah, you're in your car and you got anymore. these cheap speakers hanging off the side, and <laughs> no, not necessarily. I mean, if I take my hearse, my a hearse is a great go. car to take to the drive-in, <laughs> uh, especially if it's got the radio transmitters, because I have such great sound in my hearse. My drive. Well, I don't think we all have hearse. <laughs> well, <laughs> you might be the exception to the rule, Al. <laughs> yeah, sure. well, I've always got a date, so there. <laughs> yeah. No, but see, that's the only other way. You know, now that movies that we were talking about is like the drive-ins right now is the big rage at the moment because. There's your big rage. And we've lost Joe again. 
Because you're killing us, Joe. Oh, killing me, Smalls. You're killing me, Smalls. You're going to have to repeat everything. I'm going to have to cut all of it. You're going to have to rewind it, Joe. Yeah, Rewind Joe, it all the way back man. to where you said because. You're still yeah. trying to freeze when you freeze, man, so you can be watching uh, it. So see it. Uh, am I back? Yes, now, you got to go all the way back to because. because. Okay. Why are they driving so good? Because. <laughs> <laughs> forbidden knowledge we are not allowed to know the interwebs will not let us hear it <laughs> he sounds like a bad robot impersonation <laughs> ding 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 <laughs> oh poor, poor he's being teleported now to the mothership given a dose of orange of uh, pumpkin spice and being sent back on the planet. It's like blazing. Do you ever see Blazing Saddles, Al? Oh, well, yeah. The sheriff of Rock Ridge is our thing. <laughs> is a what? He's a. <laughs> That's okay. All right. Well, thank you guys for uh, putting up with us tonight. Um, we just love talking about cinema. This is a horror show, uh, but when something like Dune comes out, um, we couldn't help but come on and uh, give our impressions about it. And um, we can't give our impressions without also talking about COVID-19. So um, this film is coming out uh, December 18th, but uh, definitely watch the release date because that might change depending upon the uh, uh, current uh, atmosphere of the pandemic. Uh, either way, uh, quick note that we have uh, a lot of guests lined up uh, for September all the way through October, as well as a few more retrospective shows like Trick or Treat, um so keep it locked here we're going to be releasing more podcasts more grim and bloody theater shows and uh, we'll keep you entertained have a good night everybody night good night, good night everyone